Can I encourage you on today? I pray you find strength today, a little more than you possessed yesterday, and so much more to gain tomorrow. We all have the powerful ability to overcome any challenge. Take it at your pace. Don't give up, baby. You got this. I hope you take just one step today, just a pivot, just a decision, just something you need in order to manage and find solutions. I hope you understand that small changes lead to bigger ones and that your place of confusion and instability comes from your reluctance to forge thoughts with actions. We've all been there, stuck in indecision or afraid to go a little farther than our need. Perhaps you feel you don't have the resources you're being led to do something bigger. Maybe God is calling you and fear is holding you back. You may be afraid to take the front row seat or devastated by the thought of moving to a place in your life that looks completely different from the past or the present place. Though initiating the step can be scary, do it anyway. It's something on the other side of needed decisions, something that provides you with peace, a new life, greater opportunities, the ability to see clear in a world of unknown being exactly what you need. Don't afraid to be you. Start the ministry, start the movement, begin the hobby. Move away, sever ties or make them whole. Take the picture, start the business, curate the channel, write the book, post the quotes, tell your story, show who you are, be led by the spirit and not mishandled by the fear. I hope you take one step today. Just a pivot, just a decision, just something you need in order to manage and find solutions because one step closer is one step towards everything. Promise for your best tomorrow. Now, this wasn't the topic that I chose to speak about, but it came to me so clear in my prayers this morning because I had just gotten through a situation where I had to make a decision, um, not rapidly, but I definitely needed to make a decision and I decided to take my time. But also by doing that, I allowed myself to make a small decision to move me towards the bigger decision that I had to make. And I think sometimes the fear of the unknown reduces our ability to make things happen. If this faith that we so speak of that comes through our hearts and uh, the vessels of who we are and also through the vocal abilities in which we tell other people, why is it that we cannot do it for ourselves? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's easy. It's easy to be on the outside and tell other people what it is that they need to do because we plainly see how it's constructed and the pathways to lead someone to the finish line. But when we're in it, we're blockaded by the nuances of the things that are uh, boundaries to us where we can't oversee things that are standing in front of us. But here's one thing that I've learned about decision making that has helped me step by step a little bit by a little bit. It is that I intentionally want to move forward and not want to stay stuck. Staying stuck to me is the scariest place to be because I can't create a place or find any different solution or that I can't be anything different or that I can't be called to what God wants me to be by be complacent and holding steady to a space that provides me with nothing. And just like many of you, you have decisions to make, whether it be on your job, whether it is um, in a relationship, whether it is with your children, whether it is a situation where you're, you know, deciding whether you want to move or occupation. So many things that we have to decide money uh, decisions as well. And taking one small step to get to the bigger place that we need to be. Uh, is initiating a function of saying, I sit in this, but I'm forging forward so that I can take it step by step to get to where I need to be. Here's another thing that I learned as well about taking steps. Sometimes it is great to have the opinion of others, especially when it's something so heavy and so severe that you kind of need someone to walk you through and talk to you in how to manage your steps. And great people can provide great insight because sometimes people have gone through it themselves. And sometimes, again, like I just mentioned, they're on the outside so they can kind of lead you to the pathway in order for you to find your solution in that space. People with wisdom, people who love you, people who have nothing to get back from holding and helping you will provide you with the knowledge that you need in order to make the next step so that you can be to a place of wholesomeness. But we also know that there are some people that are not good for us, that in times of indecision or moving forward, we should not discuss our next move. Sometimes being quiet about how we're moving forward 
uh, gives us the opportunity and the space to make those decisions for ourselves because we know also that some people can just be negative. Some people don't know where it is that we're going to, traveling to, where our destination will be. And other people are just ignorant in their replies. And so sometimes you just have to be quiet, be still, and allow God to give you the wisdom to move forward in whatever decision that you make. To every person who feels like there is a business idea or venture and they don't have the money or the um Maybe something, you know, supply that you need. Listen, I'm one to be a believer that God orchestrates all. And I believe in the power of prayer. And I also believe in the power of praying for people to come to you that can assist you in anything that you need. Because sometimes the solution is not in our hands. If we know that we don't have the money, my prayer would be, Lord, I ask that you provide people in my space to grant me what I need to move to the next level, whether it is I'm going to a bank to talk to a financial advisor or a loan officer. And Lord, I ask that you employ some type of grace and blessing on my behalf so that the answer is not no, but a yes. And even in that no, even in that no, if the no is granted at that time, that I am given some source of information that can help me along in my decision making next. Maybe the credit score is not where it needs to be. Maybe I need a little bit more to put down. Maybe there are some factors that I didn't consider before going into this space, wanting this yes. The no doesn't mean that it's the end. The no means that There is something behind it that may need to be curated in order for you to see. But you never take no as an answer and lie down. You take no as an opportunity to build and move forward. For those of you who are in decision about moving, maybe you're just tired of the place that you have dwelled in for so long. Maybe opportunities seek and find you in different spaces. Maybe it is that you want a fresh new start. Maybe you're going through a tumultuous relationship and you find that in order to move past it and heal uh, and to gravitate to better things for you, that moving would be a part of the decision making well let's process the change let's get that money up right let's research the market let's research where we're going with let's research the occupation that we'll be sitting in to foster the ability to live never take no as an answer don't lie down if it's not working for you in the moment in which you need it to work be still and know that everything that is for you, God will ensure that it happens. And listen, even if your desire is to move by the end of the year and God expounds that decision and says that this year won't be the year, but next year will believe and trust the process of all things. Because one thing I know for myself to be true is even if God gives me a no, he's also giving me space because there's other things that he has curating and moving in the background that's going to be better for you, better for me in the long run because I could easily move to another place, but it doesn't mean that that job will align with what I need, won't provide me with the money I need to take care of myself. Okay, come on, y'all. That maybe the area that I'll move into is not cohesive to what it is that God has for me. Maybe um, the move is just not the right timing based on the financial confines of what I'm looking at right now. Maybe the market will change. Maybe economical factors will change. Maybe God is just preparing me for something better. Maybe that location is not where I'm supposed to be, but trust and believe that God has something working for your good. I always say this, don't be afraid to be you. Always stay at the realm of who you are. Never change who you are. If we are changing, we are changing for the better, right? But I'm not doing anything outside of who I am at the core of who I am. 
begin the hobby, move away, sever ties, or make them whole. Take the picture. Mm, take the picture. I want to say something about that. Sometimes we get a little in our heads about the experiences that we have. And although I do understand that some people feel that taking pictures of themselves is a nuance, um, that people will perceive them a certain way, that they're a me, me, me type of person, I also believe that pictures tell a story. And it also is a grounding of how you feel in that moment. Wherever you go, take that picture. If you feel nice and cute today, if you got on your best outfit, take that picture. Listen, memories, memories may flee, but pictures, they stay for a while. And this is coming from a photographer, (laughs) y'all. Curate the channel, write the book, post the quotes, tell your story. Sometimes we are afraid to allow people to see the inside of us. And while I am a private person as well, I also know that there is a story that needs to be told. And God has tapped me on my shoulder many times and says to open up, open up, open up. But he does it in a way where he allows my first step to be an okay step where God uh, knows my heart and he knows who I am. And so he opens it up a little bit. And when I get comfortable with that, he opens it up a little bit and says, take the next step. Wherever you are in your life, if you feel like you are pulling or being pulled by God, I ask you to open up and receive it. God does not expect for you to be perfect, but he does expect for you to follow the will. Because I know this for my life, that following the will also gives a vast amount of opportunities and connects you with people who are um, on a journey as well or who have defeated that journey and gotten to the higher place of themselves in that perspective and who can teach you so much more. In this important line, (laughs) be led by the spirit and not mishandled by the fear. Let spirit guide you. And if you are unsure what spirit is, what it's showing you, what where it's having you to go, pray a simple prayer and ask God to show you signs. Don't put a limitation. Don't say, God, I need you to show me a sign now today. Because listen, the way God works is not how we work and vice versa. It's just totally different. But my prayer is always if I'm indecision about something that I'm not sure is led or shown to me by the spirit. I ask God to show me, show me in signs. I'm a visual person. So normally it comes up in a post that I may see as scrolling or something on a billboard. I have seen messages on a billboard (laughs) that have just really released that fear that I had that moved me forward to doing what it is that God expected me to do. Don't allow fear to compound you. Listen, fear is one of those things. If you um, let me picture this for you. Hmm, Let me give you an example. Fear is like a nail and a hammer. Mm -hmm. A nail and a hammer. You are nailing something in the wall, let's say, for an example. And fear is one of those things where just as you pound, the nail goes in, it goes in, it goes in. And then all of a sudden, when it's done, it stays stuck and it doesn't move any longer. It holds what it needs to hold and it is not positioned any different way until the person decides to take it out. Fear compounds you into a place to be stuck. It doesn't allow you to give. It doesn't allow you to move differently. You're not bendable. You are just stuck. And if my very desire to pivot, to move, to change is to do so, then I have to be able to be bendable. I have to be able to maneuver in ways that allows me to see what the opportunities are for me. When we take a step, we are, again, one step closer to the goal. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Sometimes things just don't work out in a week. A month, a year, hell, sometimes it takes three years, but as long as you are continuously taking steps to get to where you are, you're never behind. And also for those of you who felt like nothing ever good has come your way, who also allows fear to stop them from thinking 
that good things can happen for them, I want to tell you something. The way you think about the ability that God can provide from, for you can keep you back from the things that God wants for you and desires. Because one of the things about life and believing and and God and also what it is that he can do for us is that God can take a step, but he also needs us. So it's not all of God's decision to make things whole or to make um, something happen, but it also has to be done from our perspective, from our doing. We have to be actionable in the wheel. We have to forge as well as accept. We have to know that God wants great for us, just like he wants everyone else. Just because historically things didn't go right for you. You missed opportunities, maybe by your own account or maybe by others. It doesn't mean that you are not deemed necessary to be blessed with what it is that God has promised you. And even if you are at a place where you really can't see your way out, you don't see the light, you are in the darkest, deepest whole taking one step brings you closer to the light and I never want you to forget that I never want any one of you to stay stagnant in a position to not be bendable movable not see the areas of life that needs to be assessed where you cannot see the areas of life where you can grow where you don't see the areas of your life that can be greater than what it is. And also, in the tie with different people, I don't want us to stay stagnant in our connections with people, where we know that people are not doing us great justice in our friendships or our relationships, and we're staying stagnant and not allowed to grow. Either we have these hard conversations And become bendable with these people. Or we bend ourselves out of these situations. Respectfully. And as we take a step, we we grow step by step. Your strength today will be a little bit more tomorrow. And then the next day. And then before you know it. The idea of suicide. The idea of depression, the idea of manic episodes, the idea of anxiety, the idea of sorrow, all of those things will slowly wither away because the strength that you find and taking those steps to initiate change will allow you to see things differently. You look at yourself differently. You look at life differently and you begin to process a life of your own the way that you want it and need it to be and which is also congruent to your future and what God has for you. Last but not least, take your steps at your own pace. Two people are not the same. Sally may get to step three before you do, but comparison is the thief of joy. Stay in your lane. Move forward. Don't look to the right. Then don't look to the left. What you have going on is purely by you, the journey and the destination that unfolds. Never give up. Never think that you are not enough. Never think that uh, you can't have enough. And never think that God has been lost on you. One small step leads to a bigger step to your tomorrow. And so I hope that those words were encouraging to you. I know that many of us are battling with so many things, so many changes in our lives, and it seems as if we can't get a break. Take life as it is. Move in your own direction. Move with its own desire. And know that God is always here to protect you, to love you, to extend grace and to be here forever. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for listening in. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for just being who you are. 
If you are loving the episodes, love what I do, um, I don't know, you know, just like it. <laughs> you can go to lisamarie.info and if you want to give uh, the one-time donation, baby, you can do that. It doesn't matter. You can give me 10 cents if you want to. <laughs> um, or if you just you know, want to give me some words of encouragement as well. There's a little button down there that says fan mail. And um, I love to receive it. I've been receiving some. Matter of fact, I'm going to share some with y'all. Now, I just want to say that when I get this fan mail, it is totally anonymous. Even though I think you guys put your number or something in, it only shows me the last four digits of your number and it shows the city and state so I just got one recently and this person said just wanted to say thank you currently dealing with a difficult situation that involves a father he was never fully present but he now lives with me and I've been and it's been bringing up much from the past and she just goes on to say just wanted to say thanks because a particular episode gave me some insight on how to better deal I appreciate you guys for just being here, man. And remember that um, August 12th, I will be starting my coaching and I will also launch my website as well. I got some other things that's cooking, but y'all, I just, I can't speak on it. <laughs> I just can't speak on it. I'm excited though. But August 12th, um, please, 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 uh, I'll be sending it through email and I'll also be posting it on social media. So if you know someone in need of coaching, if it's you, tap in, read everything you need to read and decide if that's something that you want. Okay, not going to talk too long. Love you. Love you. Love you. I pray your heart and your spirit is in a great place. And until next time, see you later.